Hey adventurers, welcome to the final episode of our journey through the Flinders. In this episode, we are hiking the beautiful 12 km round trip to Blinman Pool. Plus, I'll be comparing the Garmin InReach Mini 2 and the Zuleo to see which one can get a SOS signal out in the Blinman Gorge. Spoiler alert, I also make friends with the Echidna. But that's not all, we are checking out Alpana Station, which is new territory for me, and tackling their toughest trek, Mount Samuel and Buggery Gorge. To cap it off, we are spending an unforgettable night at the secluded Nanga Woodina hut on Alpana Station. So let's get the adventures rolling. We found this rock here. So I think that's Michaela or so, something like that. If it is, hello. We found your rock. Hmm. You were at a beautiful camp spot here at Mulalolo. They found this huge moth next to his camp. As a matter of fact, we had them flying around everywhere at night. Sadly, this was the last morning for Dave as he was made his way back home because he had to get back to work. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, Stephen. It's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Uh, it's been a fantastic trip again. Flinders never, never lets us down, does it? No, it doesn't. Always, always sensational. Always something to see. Just here, Angot Village. And doing the Blindman pool walk. That's why I always carry a big pack, a day pack. I mean I have two different ones. That is my yeah two, three, four hour walk pack. Uh, yeah, a Deuter with a water bladder in. I'm gonna fill the bladder up now. We go, I think the walk is two and a half hours one way. So it could be five hours. So Zoleo, also the Garmin in reach. And for full disclosure, I purchased the uh, Soleo, the Garmin InReach Mini 2, because I couldn't afford two, didn't have the budget for that. A247 um, provided me these for testing and review purposes. Um, yeah, check them out. They have a lot of the gear I use. And yeah, they support me for some time now. And I appreciate that they have a very good customer service. They have good prices. And also you get $20 off for any purchase over $100 if you use my code. If you want good quality camping gear, they're certainly the place to go. And yeah, and I really appreciate that they support me, provide me this so I can compare them both. Yeah, Blinman Pools walk. Very picturesque and uh, quite a bit of water flowing, which supposedly is quite rare. Um, fresh water. Yeah, look at some of the pools here. Did look at that pool, that is my swimming hole here. Fresh, that's for sure. I'm here in the Blinman Gorge on the Blinman Pools Walk. I can only highly recommend. Cliff faces all around, and I want to see now whether I can connect to my Garmin InReach Mini 2 and my Zoleo and can send out messages. Let's assume I broke my leg here, I'm by myself, I can't get out. Could I get help here? So... So there's some tedious testing ahead, but let me summarize it quickly for you. Initially, I could send a message from the Zoleo, but Garmin wouldn't send it. Tried Zoleo again from the same spot and no luck. Probably a satellite position issue. I decided to walk a bit further and after about 10 minutes, both devices started sending and receiving messages again. Lesson learned, if you're having trouble with satellite connections, try changing your location, even if you have to crawl. 
If you can't move, you may wait and hope that a satellite comes into a good position again to send your message or SOS. However, keep in mind, reception in a gorge depends on satellite position, so it's not something to rely on. The higher you can get up, the better your chances of getting a satellite connection. Linden pool walk I can only highly recommend. Stunning. Stunning. Absolutely loving it. Even take the smarter route. Those pools. <laughs> oh, it's slippery. Is that rock underneath or? Yeah, slippery yeah? rock. Ah. Can we go to the No. Woo! Yay! I should be filming. Woo! Yes. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> so, how, how cold is it? Got it? Yeah. Oh, it's cold. But I'm getting out. Is that cold, huh? It's pretty cold. Yeah, I didn't go for a swim. I really wanted to. I didn't bring any swimmers. I had no towel. Uh, there was a lady there, but Greg and Joanne. Greg went in. Um, nah, next time, next time. In an angle, same as here. So these whole earth plates in the early days would have been pushed up through I don't know what. Um, quite an interesting geology in the Flinders. Look at this. Too good to pass up. I hope no one comes. That was a beautiful swim. It was damn cold, but well worth it. Ah, having memory maps with me here, which uh, shows the whole walk. And 9.8 kilometer, 4.7, now I'll be mucked around a bit. Three hours and nine. That's all right, nearly there. Probably another 10, 15 minutes. Ah, track completed, 10k to a second pool, a bit over three hours return with mucking around. So, looking forward to a golden horse now. Haven't eaten anything today, so that was all on empty stomach and my ice cream now, that's for sure. Oh. See, that's what I need. No, vanilla, I say no coffee, but vanilla will do. Good oh, yeah. Hey, how am I? On the way back to Molulu, I came past these echidna on the road, which I guided safely over the road. 
He seemed to take a liking to me because he followed me around and, yeah, wouldn't let me go. The nights can be quite cold in the Flinders, so it was time for firewood to keep us warm. Stephen's electric chainsaw came in quite handy. Stephen tried on our Blinman pool walk to use his Garmin watch. And I dare to say he was more standing looking at the watch than walking. It has five buttons. Each button has two functions. Depending on which button you push first, changes the function for the next button. Uh, let alone acquiring satellites and timing and start and stop, um, it is so complicated that I gave up. To see how it tastes, because really that's an interesting mix I never tried. Yeah hey guys, sadly the last day at Mololo Station. Um, we're heading off to Alpana, I think it's called today. We were planning to do a long detour via an old pa, which would lead us past some ruins, but supposedly that's very rough and takes three hours for 30 kilometers. And then we have the signature track on Olpana station to do today, and I heard that that is pretty rough. Look, we shall see. But so we decided to go straight via Angochina village uh, to Alpana and yeah looking forward to it we headed into alpana station to collect the key for the mount samuel trek and when we got uh, chatting with sally the owner there she mentioned oh that uh, it is a fairly hard trek we said we are for wheel drive instructors and she mentioned yeah the last instructor got all hung up and stuck and needed recovery so Stephen and myself were quite excited what the day would bring and decided to better have something good to eat before we start the trek. And the Blinman Miners Trip is the perfect place for a good pie. Stephen, are we ready for the scary adventure on Mount Samuel? I'm not sure. Uh, I've got a change of underwear. Yeah, good. Let's see what happens. Let's not jinx it. Get stuck on a rock and get stuck on a or rock. Our bars. Yes, like the we've been advised. The previous four wheel drive instructor, yeah. instructor who drove it. Yeah. But he made mistakes apparently. He said he did everything wrong, so we tried to avoid that. Yeah. We've got to restore the ladies' faith, faith in, in instructors. instructors. Yes. As I didn't know much about the trek, it turned out that we had to go all the way past uh, Mululu to enter the Mount Samuel trek. However, it is a beautiful drive down there, so that was no issue. And yeah, now we are on the Mount Samuel trek and wondering how challenging it will really be. So this is the Mount Buggery Gorge part of the Mount Samuel trek. I show you a video of the whole trek but speed up the easy parts so you get a good idea what the trek is about and whether it's suitable for your driving skill and your vehicle.
This is a very tight section here now where Stephen with his long wheelbase stretch patrol had to navigate a little bit to get around there. With the cruiser even I didn't have too much room there because there's a tree on the left. For our vehicles and setup, I would rate it maybe a 3 out of 10 in regards to difficulty. No comparison to some of the stuff in the Benelby ranges or even at Warawina. However, it is a nice, interesting trek and I definitely recommend driving it and I happily do the trek again. Half an hour later, you must have had at least three recoveries. I only had that much room <laughs> next to that gum tree. Uh, on that, where that big cliff was. Yeah. Sorry for the quick interruption, but I would like to express gratitude to a few companies who have generously supported me with assistance with fuel and gear for testing during this expedition. These companies have provided these resources unconditionally, requesting nothing in return except for an honest assessment of the product. Angorochina village was originally established in 1927. The name Angorochina is derived from the Aboriginal term Janarigina which means open place or wide valley. The land was given to the Tubercula Soldier Aid Society by the owners of Angorchina Station. The society raised money which was supplemented with a grant from the government to build a hostel where World War I soldiers which returned with tuberculosis could rest and recover. Angorichina village is nestled in the rugged Parachilna Gorge between Parachilna and Blinman. It's a place where visitors can explore some of the best day walks and scenic wonders in the region. It also has a store, fuel and accommodation. We arrived back at Alpana and got instructions to get to our home for the night, which was the Nanga Wooden Hut, which is around 7 kilometers from the homestead. However, it feels like you are light years away from anywhere. This is a Nanga Wudena hut at Alpana station. The drive in is absolutely gorgeous. Um, let's see how that hut is. No. There's light, not really, it's supposed to have light, that is a beautiful, very rustic hut, stunning, gas stove, that's good, so no water, could be water outside somewhere, in the fireplace. Cutlery here. Yeah. It 
has an external abulu it has an external abolution and shower block. However, for some reason we couldn't get the hot water going, which wasn't a big issue as we had a shower the no, day before. I tried that as well. Switch. All right, gas is on. Got gas. All else files, ready instructions. The drive in uh, to here, yes, from the station was. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you've got to watch your watch your lines through a nice little forest of young cypress pines. Very pretty. Yeah, we had the right time of the day. Very, very picturesque to drive in in my book. Yeah, and I reckon for yeah, you need. Uh, Oh, I mean, we weren't in no range really, but you, you want to have a little bit of ground clearance, you want to yeah. pick a little bit of lines, especially with an IFS. Um, yeah. But nothing too difficult, you just got to... Yeah, you know, just got to watch. Watch your lines, yeah. Yeah, but you're not going to drag a van in here, that's for sure. No, no. Um, yeah, I love that, I love that drive-in. That pine trees, the rolling hills, the the mountains around us. Beautiful place. So I, I honestly can recommend the. Someone wants a secluded uh, couple of nights. Yeah. At the end of this track in this hut, you're not going to get any passing traffic, and you've got it all yourself uh, because I only let it out to one lot at a time. Um, yeah. You're going to have a very peaceful stay. One way track. The beds are six bunks. The mattresses, I have to say, are reasonably bunk bed mattresses. So I put my inflatable mattress on top. If you're five for ten, not a problem. Yeah. If you're six for two, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you're my size, my feet hang over a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's why you come here. You, you have a secluded campsite in the middle of nowhere. You can sit if it's windy and so on. You can have a fire inside. You can sit inside. You can cook. You have a hot shower. Um, yeah, I don't know. What Toilet. Do you want more? Toilet. Rainwater tanks. Yeah. And shelter. No, hi highly recommend. And the drive-in is interesting. I mean, it's you don't fall asleep. Um, yeah, beautiful. Really like it. It's a very good end actually to our Flinders trip. We had a very long day being on the road since 6 o'clock and Stephen decided to stay at the hut and I wanted to go up the Sunset Hill Lookout which is a few kilometers away and yeah was also looking forward to drive that at night because it is a reasonably interesting drive especially at night and uh, the station owners recommend to not drive at night but yeah I had good lights and there was no issue station was a little bit concerned to drive this here at night um, I recommended not to but again with light all no issues you know that is pretty dim and I can you know very hard to describe these laser but I reckon they just the best in mimicking daylight they don't provide a spot, they give you overall illumination of all the area you want to see 
without really glaring or blinding it's not too bright too white it's just very natural and even driving longer at night with the lights I've never had an issue with the laser um, with other lights I had before I mean also no problem I, I can do it but it becomes more tiring to the eye um, yeah anyway that's just me well, guys I've just come back from the sunset lookout and uh, want something quick on track meals beef bolognese never tried that and I've got some I usually actually don't make noodles because extra water doesn't exist so that's why I actually really never have noodles but I brought some of these and I'm gonna now put them all together in I saw somewhere on YouTube that that works that you can actually cook the noodles in the sauce we shall see to be honest I think that works all right doesn't look too bad on track meal spaghetti bolognese Japanese noodles Italian bolognese I think it's actually bolognese with chili or so mm -hmm. very edible good now I think I have to reconsider noodles because making in the pan like this that works quite well and this Japanese stuff is fairly quick cooking anyway still using the blue eddy the EB3A to keep everything charged while I'm working yeah anyway now the work starts well I'll just go to bed it's nice and warm in here though well, that's it for the Flinders Range part of my journey. If you've been liking what you see, I'd really appreciate your support. Simply click that like button, sharing these videos, subscribing and dropping a comment would mean the world to me. It might not seem like much, but these small gestures really help me out, especially since I'm mostly funding this channel myself. If you can afford it, please consider to head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and support me with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month. That would be absolutely awesome. I'm sharing these adventures because I love it and want to bring you along. But hold on, there's more ahead. I'm moving on to the desert next, following in the steps my buddy Dennis Patel took years ago. I'm on a mission to find the blaze trees he marked and uncover the Simpson Desert native wells he found again after they were lost for decades. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned.